Michael Orr and The Blind Side. If you remember The Blind Side, 2009 film involving the story of Michael Orr, the Tui family, it came to the theaters, and uh, I don't know, Leanne Tui got a very generous upgrade with Sandra Bullock portraying her in the film. I remember watching it at the time. I don't remember much about it, but I remember watching it. Kind of had that weird white savior vibe to it, but uh, all in all, it was just, you know, kind of a, a loosely sports related drama that was more or less a rags to riches story, and then he ended up getting drafted in the first round by my Baltimore Ravens. I think he ended up winning a Super Bowl with the team. Left side tackle eventually got moved to guard or something like that. But yeah, no, he was pretty good for a long time. But now he's back in the news. Back in the news because apparently the Tui family... Not exactly as uh, helpful as first thought. Inside Michael Orr's crumbling relationship with Blindside Family and his fury over the movie's impact on his life and career, as the NFL star accuses the Tuies of lying about adopting him and making millions off his fame. What the? Okay, yeah. So there was a lawsuit that was filed uh, yesterday or a couple of days ago. I guess really boils down to uh, simply assessing some paperwork. Was he adopted or was this a conservatorship? Because apparently that's what's being alleged here. Former NFL star Michael Orr has made no secret uh, the fact that he had many issues uh, with the acclaimed 2009 film. Yeah, because he was a guy of a uh, pretty decent talent, but I think the film came out during his rookie season or his sophomore season, very, very, very early in his career, bringing all of that attention to him. It's like, Christ almighty, you know, that's a whole lot of attention for ultimately ended up being, you know, somebody of average to above average NFL lineman talent. So yeah, man, fair enough. Uh, which his own personal story and that of his so-called adoptive family inspired. Now that the retired athlete has made a revelation which would indicate the entire Sandra Bullock-led movie is based on a lie, shockingly fans... Oh, shocking fans that claim that he is not actually the adopted son of Sean and Leanne Tui, as the movie portrays. In yet another unexpected twist regarding Orr and the, uh, uh, the Tui family, the 37-year-old has alleged the sensational legal filing against his family uh, that he was tricked into signing a document that made them conservators, not his adoptive parents, allowing them to profit off his name. Hmm, interesting. It's... It's kind of half-ass believable because whenever you see these fantastical legal claims, you've got to run the smell test, okay? It doesn't make sense. Okay, why? Why would a well-to-do white family go into the inner city to snatch up a kid who had no life prospects but a little bit of athletic talent, if not to make a little bit of easy money off of them? Does it make sense? Eh, kind of. You know, you could kind of see it in a warped sense. Just really hope that it isn't true, but then at the same time, well, you know, hey, we, we can hear out the evidence on this. And this is another one of those situations where it's like, okay, did you illegally adopt him? That's pretty easy to check. Was this a conservatorship that he ended up entering into? Or at least his birth mother signed him over at a junior age? And was that enforceable? I, it, this is pretty easy. And if you just look at the documents, you can suss this out fairly quickly. But while the fan of the movie were left reeling by the accusations i'll be completely honest are there any fans of the film that are left like obviously it was it was pretty big at the time but does anybody have like a watch party it's like oh my god we're coming up on the 14th year anniversary of the blind side coming out like yeah it won an oscar but at the same time fucking crash won an oscar Meh. this is not the first time that Orr has shared his distaste over the hit film and the changes that were made of his life story in order to create the perfect hollywood script yeah it totally makes sense the sports star made it clear that his elements of his childhood and his character had been changed in an inauthentic way to make the story more entertaining, with no real regard for how it might have impacted his life. Yeah, exactly. Orr was born to a drug addict mother and a convict father in Tennessee in 1986, busting apart stereotypes, and spent a troubled childhood in and out of school where he had to repeat both the first and second grade. Again, busting apart stereotypes. Uh, the Blindside movie told the story of how Michael met a Leanne Tui and uh, the rest of his adoptive family as a teen and the family helping to nurture his love of football, which eventually saw him go to the University of Mississippi. Yes, Ole Miss on a scholarship. Yes, ended up getting drafted in, uh, in the first round, blah, blah, blah. In 2004, uh, while Orr was aged 18, he signed a petition that made him 
Oh, he signed on to a petition that made them his conservators and, in other words, able to illegally act upon his business interests in his name. Okay, so interesting. Okay, Michael, alle Michael has alleged in a new lawsuit that the conservatorship enabled the Tui family to strike a deal wherein they, inclusive of the two children, would receive royalties from the heartwarming movie. Okay, the athlete claims that he has not received a cent from the motion picture. Interesting there's a way okay well obviously it's like you were 18 years old you signed over your likeness to your family that or i guess your uh, purported family took you in raised you and okay somebody just running back the story uh, a lawyer or a judge running back the story goes at 18 years old you know being kind of subject to some very high-powered donors that ended up getting you fast track to Ole miss was he pressured into signing that did he know exactly what he was signing like there's a lot of interesting legal questions and then also now that this is Nearly a 20-year-old story. Why now come forward? ESPN first learned in the report that Orr, that Orr filed a 14-page petition in Shelby County, Tennessee, Monday, alleging the centrality of the movie was a lie and the Tui family used him as a means to acquire further wealth. According to the Daily Memphin, is that a real paper? Uh, Sean Tui represented a uh, responder to Orr's allegations saying, we are going to keep moving, or we are going to keep loving Michael. Yeah, we got more on him in a second. Uh, Daily Mail looks back yeah, at everything that Michael Orr has said about the issues from the family's movie. Okay, telling his side of the story in a 2011 memoir, I beat the odds from homelessness to the blind side and beyond. Yeah, there he is on the stage. But the rest of the family, you know, with the, wearing more paraphernalia than he did when he was drafted in the first fucking round. Okay, very interesting. Um, Michael shared his uh, true attraction to the film in his uh, 2011 book, I Beat the Odds, we know that. Okay, now he stated that it's far more social and extroverted uh, that he had appeared in the movie and that he was much more competent with his schoolwork. I felt like I was portrayed, uh, that they portrayed me as dumb instead of a kid who had never had consistent academic instruction and ended up thriving once he got it. Is that really worth suing over? But I understand that this is going through a laundry list of concerns that he had with the film. He also took issue with the fact that he was shown as less Oh, with less athletic ability and knowledge than he actually had as a teen. Again, he wouldn't have been drafted in the first round if he wasn't athletic. So yeah, downplaying that shit, yeah, a little bit scummy. But again, is that really your family's concern? No, no, okay. He also took issue with the fact that he had a lack of athletic knowledge was a focal point to the blind side as SJ and Leanne tried to teach him football. Yeah, exactly. That was what was so sus about that. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. You're going to have little Sandra Bullock boss around a giant black guy who was playing Michael Orr, which is at least, you know, good casting on that one. She's going to be the brains behind this. Okay, then. According to NPR, he wrote, Quentin Aaron did a great job acting the part, but could not figure out why the director chose to show me as someone who had to be taught to the game of football. Yeah, yeah. Michael takes a swipe at the movie before winning the Super Bowl in 2012, which... I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, at one point in time, it's just really tough to get down. I got the, I think his, I'm pretty sure his signature's on the helmet that I have over there, so there's a point to it. It's my favorite possession that I have, but yeah, that team is super underrated. I've got a video about it, it's a really old video that's on the channel, but you can find it. Oh yeah, and he, then he also won another, yeah, that would have been the NFC Championships, because... Uh, Panthers never won a Super Bowl. No, I don't think so. During the press conference ahead of the game, he made it clear that he wasn't a fan as, oh, as he told the press, I'm tired of the movie. I'm here to play football. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, so he was drafted in whatever it was, 2007, I think. Yeah. So five years into his career when he's just trying to get out of a rookie contract and he's getting all the attention that all the other superstars and especially with the you know, Baltimore Ravens at the time, because what you had Haloti Nata, Terrell Suggs, it was Ray Lewis's final game. And he had all of the stupid, you know, fly by night media coming towards, you know, the now right tackle. And it's like, hmm, Christ almighty, I just want to play football for God's sakes. So yeah, I could understand all of that immediate attention puts a certain amount or a certain expectation on top of you that you're going to be this, you know, superstar so that there can be a, a follow-up film and that hopefully that gives Sandra Bullock some, you know, career assurance. Anyways, um, then in 2015, the Carolina Panthers left tackle revealed how he felt the movie has caused negative impact on his legacy as a football player. Exactly. Probably for the reasons that I mentioned, uh, Michael appears to pull back from the to or yeah, from the Tui family by failing to post them on a social media or invite them to his wedding. So yeah, this has been a long time coming when it comes to this. And yeah, it really does look like, you know, 
he's out there living his best life and oh, maybe his oh my god does his wife have a back tattoo l mike l mike but it is what it is if it's if he's happy and all that shit and this shit it, it actually comes out that it's somewhat correct i'll be completely honest man like this guy got a raw deal which you could always just kind of see as well he got a whole bunch of attention that he didn't necessarily want or desire he just wanted to play football for fuck's sakes so Sean Tui, devastated over the blindside subject, Michael Orr, and just the way that he's characterized. He's a blindside subject. No, man. He's a Super Bowl champion at the end of the day. His performance, well, helped lead her, helped afford Joe Flacco to have one of the best postseason performances and then go on to just, well, do nothing with the rest of his career. Joe Flacco was really fucking good for one postseason, but then that's it. Hell of an arm. Very little career longevity. Uh, claiming family made millions off of the lie. The allegations are insulting. All right. Sean is speaking out over the allegations made by Michael Orr, claiming he was tricked into signing a conservatorship, uh, which the Tuies used to profit off of his name. Or is the subject of the 2009 film, The Blind Side, which, ter uh, which in turn was based off of, yes, uh, the book by Michael Lewis. John Lee Hancock directed movie was a rag to riches a story centered around Orr getting adopted by the Tui family, you know, who would guide him to pursue a career in football that would lead him to be a star, a star in the NFL. Just a couple of years after he got drafted. No, he's going to be a big star, big time star. The offensive tackle is now saying the film in the book was based on a lie, something that Tui, that the Tuies are contesting. Didn't you write it like that? Anyways, we're devastated, Tui said. According to the Daily Memphin, it's upsetting to think that we made all this money off of any of our children. But we're going to love Michael at 37 just like we loved him at 16. Because we still want royalties off of anything else that he does. I'm joking. We don't know that for sure. Tui claims that the family didn't make any money off the movie. Cap. Total cap. Adding, well, Michael Lewis gave us half of his share. Anybody in the family got an equal share, including Michael. It was about 14000 dollars each we were never offered money we never asked for money my money is well documented and you know, you can look up how much i sold my company for yeah fair fair and again this is all going to be very provable when when and if this ultimately goes to court in the court filing or claims that the twoies and their two birth children received 22 oh $225,000 each plus 2.5 points for the film now that went on to gross $309 million worldwide. Yo, seriously? That's a lot of cash. Two E say that the petition was filed has a nothing to do with the movie but to appease the NCAA over or playing at Ole Miss. How did they circle back around on that one? Michael was obviously living with us for a long time and the NCAA didn't like that. Uh, I don't know about that. Okay. He said the only way Michael could go to Ole Miss is if he was actually part of the family. Ah, cap. Total cap on that. I sat Michael down and told him, if you're planning to go to Ole Miss or considering Ole Miss, uh, we think that you have to be a part of our family. Uh, we could do this illegally. We contacted the lawyers and told us that he couldn't adopt over the age of 18. Okay, so here's where the conservatorship comes in. Okay, so was there some kind of loophole where it would basically be, it would be akin, not saying that this was the case, but signing over power of attorney, something, something along those lines. I don't know all the ins and outs of this specific legal scenario. We contacted lawyers and he told us that we couldn't adopt over the age of 18. Uh, the only thing that we could do is have a conservatorship. Uh, we were so concerned it was uh, on the up and up that we made sure biological mother came to court. Okay, Tui's maintained that he was advised that he was not able to adopt or, and he was over the age of 18, but in current laws in Tennessee do allow for adult adoption. Oh, adding that that if Orr wants to end the conservatorship, they would end it. Oh, okay. I'm starting to side with Mike on this one. Sounds a little bit scummy because we're ultimately going to have to hear from the admissions department from Ole Miss asking, it's like, is this the case? Would you guys not allow him at the time if he wasn't family member of some well-to-do people in Tennessee? Hmm. Family has remained close throughout the years, but to East claims Orr's us started to get distant about a year and a half ago. Uh, it's hard because you have to defend yourself and whatever he wants will do. We're not in this for anything other than w uh, whatever he wants. If he'd have said, I don't want to be a part of this family anymore. Uh, we'd have been very upset, but absolutely would have done it. No question. The allegations are insulting, but look, it's a crazy world. You've got to live in it. It's obviously upset everybody. Yeah, 
I, just running through the timeline, just taking a look at everything that he said about, you know, the story, its over dramatization, what it ultimately ended up doing his to his career. He was probably just happy, you know, every once in a while, no offense, but just bitching and moaning about it, saying that, you know, it was kind of this dark cloud that ended up you know, dragging over my career. Still had a good career and all that stuff. Won a championship, went to a, you know played in another Super Bowl. Everything was all good and on the up and up. I just, you know, really wish that, you know, if that film were to come out, it would have been later in my career or something like that. But yeah, no, eh, it is what it is. I'm just also thinking, it's like, okay, if it coincides with him getting married, somebody thinking that, why ain't you getting no points off that motherfucking movie? I only, I, I only married you because it bit you in a fucking movie before. I've been with how many actors? I'm just wondering if he's getting some external pressure in order to pursue this. This will ultimately get a little bit more hairy, but at least a little bit more clear if it does eventually go to court. If there's any sort of discovery on that stuff, I will be interested mostly because uh, he's a raven and it's a popular story. And this is uh, it's very interesting. Not entirely sure, really. I kind of had an idea who I was siding with when we came in on this one, but now towards the end, not any more clear on this. Could be a little bit out. It uh, could be a little out of column A. Could be a little out of column B. But ultimately, like the old saying goes, there's three sides to every story: yours, mine, and the truth. And I think that's what we're ultimately going to find out with this. So, with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.